Hi guys, I hope that you are all keeping well. I will just give it a few minutes for people to join and we're going to be starting making our delicious um, hummingbird gacto, so hummingbird cake. So it's going to be made with our beautiful jam products here, some bananas, some pineapple. Um, just wait for a few people to join. I hope that you are all out enjoying, well, I was going to say nice weather, but it was a bit of a mixed bag today. Hi guys, we have some people joining, which is amazing. If you can give me a little thumbs up and uh, just to let me know that you can hear my audio okay, that would be amazing, please and thank you. Yeah, we have some people joining in now, which is great. So yeah, a little thumbs up would be amazing if you could. Let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. No point in me just talking to myself. <laughs> so this evening I'm going to be making an absolutely gorgeous gem inspired hummingbird uh, gâteau or a hummingbird cake. And that is uh, made using these delicious gem products here in front of me. And um, some beautiful bananas and pineapple and pecans. So we're going to be covering that with a beautiful um, lime buttercream as well. So I'm going to go through all the steps with you. Um, I think we are good. We have people joining there now. Um, I'm just going to check here really quickly. Yeah, if you could have any, um, I'll just say hello to everyone. Now there's the first comment in. If you have any comments yourself, pop them into the little box there. And um, that's it, I can see now. Uh, people's names are popping up, which is great. Margaret Sexton, hi, how are you? Um, so yeah, if you could let me know, you can hear me okay. Um, give me a little thumbs up, that would be sensational. And then once my audio is good, we can crack on. This is such a simple, easy cake to make. Um, I think we've all been through the phase of making banana bread and um, it's nice to do something just that little bit different as well. So this is a good way of using up bananas that you have in the house. Um, it's also a really good way, um, if the bananas are a little bit older as well, they add a beautiful sweetness um, to your bakes as well, so which means you can cut down a little bit of sugar in some of those. Um, but for this recipe we're going to get cracking now we have people watching in which is brilliant hi everyone and um, if you could let me know that you can hear me okay a little thumbs up that would be brilliant i'll be hopefully chatting to you during my demo as well i want to hear what nice baking plans you have for the weekend what you're going to make what did you make during the week and um, super nosy as always i love hearing what um what everyone is up to so let's get started First things first, I am going to get cracking here and in my bowl I have just two bananas that I have just munched up um, just at the back of a fork and then the longer you leave that the softer it will get as well which is, um, which is great. This cake we are using oil okay so the oil is going to keep this sponge really soft and um, obviously it doesn't add any flavour but again it's there to keep that mix lovely and soft. So we're just going to be mixing that through. We're cracking in two eggs in on top of that. And again, what I love about this recipe here, as you can see in front of me, all I have is um, a wooden spoon and a bowl. Super simple, super easy to make. So you don't need any crazy fancy equipment to do this one as well. Um, I am going to be making my buttercream in my mixer. It's just to one side here. Um, so. Uh, it's just easier that way, but you can also use a hand mixer as well. Um, so into that, I'm going to be using my gem sugar. So anyone that is familiar with gem, they know they have a range of different sugars. So um, they have the granulated sugar, which is more associated with teas and coffees. It's, it's nice in some cookie recipes as well. And um, caster sugar, I think the most popular one that most people use for baking. And um, icing sugar for buttercreams, which is this one here. And um, we're going to be using that one later. And then in this one here, I'm using the Gem Light Soft Brown Sugar. This is a really lovely sugar if you're um, making sponges. I find that it doesn't have an overly grainy texture. It almost um, 
melts into the sponge or cookies when you're making them. And they also have a demerara sugar um, and then like a dark soft sugar as well. There's a full range over on the Gem Pack website. That's gempackfoods.ie. Um, and all of them have different, um, I suppose, different flavor profiles. They work, some of them work really well if you're doing like a, a fruit cake. I love a really dark brown sugar. It kind of adds a caramel flavor. But for this here, we're gonna be adding the light soft brown sugar. Okay, so this just goes straight in and we're just going to be mixing that together until everything is fully combined here. Um, now, you can use caster sugar at this point. You can even use the granulated brown sugar. Um, some people are a little bit afraid sometimes in mixing up um, the sugars. So don't be afraid when it comes to that as well. You can actually mix up the sugars here. But I do find if you're going to buy ingredients for this recipe, do look for the, the gem light soft um, brown sugar really nice in this recipe so really simple so far we're left with this beautiful smooth mix like so and then into that we're just going to be sieving in our dry ingredients okay and our dry ingredients is going to be our gem self-raising flour that is the one you're looking for in the supermarket with the um kind of red label on it um, I'm going to be adding in some of the gem baking powder and then on top of that as well there's going to be a little pinch of salt I always like to add a little bit of salt to these sponges and then a pinch of cinnamon or mixed spice or whatever it is that you have at home that you like to use and um, so this is ready I'm just going to grab my sieve I'm just going to put that directly over the bowl here and I'm going to be adding in then this is my gem self-raising flour Put all that in, start filling up my sink behind me. We have um, our baking powder, that all goes in like so. Our pinch of uh, cinnamon or mixed spice, whatever it is that you're using. And then I have a good pinch of salt here as well. So for anyone who's looking for this recipe, we will have it linked on the Gem Pack Food Instagram page that you're watching here at the moment. And it'll also be available over on the Gem Pack Food website. So that's gempackfood.ie. There is this beautiful recipe and there's also tons of other amazing recipes that we've made uh, from the beginning of the year. So again, and loads more on the way as well, but there's tons over there. So if you're looking for some baking inspiration this weekend, that's where you need to head on over to. So just to get some air into that, so we're just going to be giving that a sieve over the bowl. That again is our gem self-raising flour, our baking powder, and um, pinch of cinnamon or mixed spice, whatever you're using, and um, our salt, okay? I'm just going to be pushing all of that through just to discard any little lumps or little bits of um, um, hard flour or whatever that's in there. Generally there's not, but it's just nice to um, add some air in there as well and that will leave a much lighter sponge. Um, so just with our wooden spoon here, we're just going to start mixing this all together until the um, ingredients all kind of combine together and then there's no trace of any flour left. That is the main key here, what we're looking for, that the flour has been fully incorporated into our mix. Now I have my oven preheating at 180 degrees. That's 160 um, degrees Celsius fan, if you're using a fan oven. And this sponge here will take, this goes into two tins and it will take in around, depending on your oven, 35 to 40 minutes. Again, just again, as I said, every oven differs, so it's hard to call it, but don't be afraid to give it a little poke with a knife in the center, just to ensure that it does come out nice and clean. And that is a perfect way to check if your cake is done. So again, just keep mixing this all together. And as I said, what I love here, just a bowl and a wooden spoon, nothing fancy at all. Very achievable, very easy to make. This is now where we get, um, a little bit fun here and add in those classic hummingbird flavors. So um, if anyone has made hummingbird cake before, they know that it's a blend of banana and pineapple and beautiful buttery pecans as well. So obviously I have my banana in there. Next up, I have just used tinned um, pineapples. Okay, so I've just strained those and I have just popped um, those on a chopping board and I've given them a rough chop just to um, ensure that there's a nice distribution of pineapple chunks uh, throughout the sponge. So every person that gets a slice of cake, they're getting a nice little hit of pineapple there. Obviously, the bigger you chop it, 
the less um, there will to go around all the cake. So again, I, I wouldn't chop it that it's kind of mushy consistency, but you definitely want to have a little bit of a bite in it. Um, next up here, I have my chopped pecan nuts. And they just go straight in there as well. And again, just with the spoon, I'm just going to be mixing all of this together until it is all fully combined. This, I, <laughs> I wouldn't really eat this out of the bowl right now. That's me. It looks so good. I'm just going to bring this up to the camera here just to show you. Like so. If you can see it there. I'll just... Really nice. Um, so this is going to make two sponges, as I said. Now, at this point, um, I will say, if you're looking to make a smaller cake, you can actually uh, do this recipe, cut it in half, okay? So divide this recipe that's up on the website by two, and it'll just make one sponge, and then you can cover the top of that sponge with buttercream. If you're looking for something just a little bit smaller, this is quite a nice, big, um, I suppose, celebration cake. Ideal if you've got like eight to 10 people coming over. Um, if not, it'll keep in the fridge for a few days as well. It keeps really well, especially the texture of this sponge. And then when you cover it with a buttercream, it, um, it keeps for definitely a minimum of three days in the fridge. But if you are looking to make a cake just a little bit smaller for a single um, hummingbird sponge, just divide this recipe by two, follow the same process, and you're just making basically one sponge, and then you can top that with your buttercream then instead, okay? So there's a little tip if you are looking to make something just that little bit smaller. Um, who's joining here? Hi, everybody. We've got loads of new people joining there. Say hello, give me a little wave if you can, that'd be amazing. Um, so, sponge is done. So again, just to recap, in here I had my mashed banana, I put in my gem light soft sugar, brown sugar, I had some oil in there, and um, I added in my eggs, and I just give that a good mix. On top of that then, I put in my dry ingredients, which is my gem self-raising flour, the baking powder, pinch of salt, and then cinnamon or mixed spice, depending what you're using. Mix that until we have a nice uh, consistency here. And then to that, what we're going to be doing is adding in um, our chopped pecans and our beautiful chopped tinned pineapple. Adds beautiful sweetness, gorgeous flavor, and keeps the sponge lovely and soft as well. I see a lot of people have joined there, so I'd love to know what you baked during the week or what you plan on baking during the week. As I said, I'm extremely nosy, so I love to know what people are up to in their own kitchens. So yeah, if you have any baking plans this weekend, um, please let me know. That would be amazing. Who's looking at this? Hi guys, we've got lovely messages coming in here now. Sandra, how are you? Um, I'm glad you can hear me. Um, so yes, please, now that you're all tuning in, let me know what delicious bakes you have lined up for the weekend or what you made last weekend even. So now, that is our mix ready. I have two tins that are prepared here. So these are two uh, 20 centimeter tins, okay? So I have just lined the bottom of those with, um, people coming in, hi guys. Um, we have uh, just a disc of parchment paper in the bottom and I've lightly buttered this and just dusted it with, um, that's uh, Aggie, hello, hello. Um, we had, I just dusted that with uh, a little bit of flour and this helps your cake um, just pop out that little bit easier from the tin when it bakes, okay? So now, as I said, my oven is preheating at 180 Celsius, that's 160 fan, and these cakes will take, depending on your oven, in or around 35 to 40 minutes, okay? So now I'm just gonna divide this into both of my tins. I'll bring these here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna do this by eye. This smells so good. And do you know what actually? This recipe would also work really well for cupcakes. If you make this batter um, and divide that into a cupcake tin as well, it's a very um it's a very Moorish recipe. So it's not super light because we're kind of mixing up almost like a banana bread consistency and a sponge. So it will be heavy but really, really tasty. So again, don't be afraid to try this recipe at home. Um and then play around with it. It worked really well in the loaf tin as well. So again, um, I'm just giving you a little bit of inspiration here with these lovely gem products. And then yourself at home, you can try it out, as I said, whether it's a, in this recipe, I'll just put this to one side. As I said, this recipe here, you can just cut it in half, divide it by two, and just make one of these sponges here. And then when you bake that, you can cover the top of that with the buttercream as well. So basically, it, um, it's a smaller cake. So if you don't want to go for the double sponge, 
you can cut this down. So you can see here, that is my cake batter, ready to rock and roll. Now you don't need to be overly careful. If you're making a really light Victoria sponge, I'd always say just take care when you're lifting it that you're not gonna bang it. As you can see there, there was quite a lot of mixing involved when we had added in our uh, brown sugar, our flour. So it's not a delicate cake. So you don't need to be afraid too much if you give it a little tap. Um, I was in. Oh, not to lick the bowl. That bowl is literally safe. Don't you worry. <laughs> the bowl and the wooden spoon is going to be spotless before I finish this evening. Um, the, the best part. I'm popping these into my preheated oven that is set again at 180, 160 fan. And they will take in around 35 to 40 minutes to bake. Cakes are in the oven. Just going to give my table a quick clean down here. And I'm going to bring over my board. And I'm going to show you the cakes that I have um, baked. I baked them this afternoon. So they're still quite fresh. What I would say to you is you can even make these the day before. So you can um, bake them, let them cool completely, pop them into an airtight container, and then um, you can assemble it on day two. Or even as well, if you're super organized, you can make this sponge ahead of time, let it cool completely, wrap it and freeze it. And this freezes down extremely well. So you can actually pop that out of the freezer the day before you need it and then let it defrost and then continue on from this point here as well. So it freezes really well, you can bake it the day before. Um, as I said, I did bake mine this morning, so or this afternoon, so it's still super, super fresh. So I have it here, just gonna bring that over. These are my sponges. As you can see, a gorgeous color. You're all being very shy there. I'm dying to hear what you're baking this weekend. Um, I'm looking for some baking inspiration myself. So if you'd let me know if you have any plans, what you're going baking, um, maybe what you baked during the week or what's the plans last week or what I'd love to know. I think once we kind of all got over Easter, there was a little bit of a, a calm. I think everyone was a chocolate overload. So I've seen a lot of people online this week baking nice comfort food at home, cupcakes and all the rest. And again, as I said to you, tons of recipes over on the Gem Pack Food website. That is gempackfood.ie. Loads of easy bakes over there. Lots of really comforting, especially weekend bakes. Now, moving on, I'm just going to be taking my sponge here. Just going to turn that like so. Now, as I said, this is quite fresh. So ideally, um, the longer you leave it, just the easier it is to lift it and stuff. So this will be fun now trying to do this. So I'm just gonna cut this in half. Now, at this point, there's absolutely nothing wrong with just popping your buttercream on top, decorating it, and that's it done. Like simple, easy. But again, we're just gonna do a little bit extra here. Or maybe I might, I'm trying to think here. Do you know what I might do? I might actually just pop this directly because my sponge is super soft and fresh. I might just pop that on like so. And that'll save cutting it actually. And then I can just put my buttercream and stuff on top of this. And I can just, what are we baking here? Um, rhubarb and apple crumble tomorrow. Oh my God. The classics. You really cannot beat the classics. I have to say, I do enjoy custard with my crumbles. Whenever I'm making uh, an apple crumble or an apple pie, ice cream is lovely, but I just don't think you can beat a nice vanilla custard. Um, I've tried, I've made the fresh one, obviously. It just doesn't, when you make a fresh creme anglaise, you can't really heat it up after you've um, you've made it. So it's a little bit tricky. So you can get a nice, the, even the gem does a lovely powdered custard as well. Um, it's really, really nice too. And it's, um, you can you can reheat it after you make it as well. Anyways, I'm going to just um, get cracking on my buttercream. So I might just pop this here, just to one side for a second. So in my mixer, which is just over here, I have added in, again, this is all in the recipe, some um, butter, some icing sugar, and that's the gem icing sugar, which is here. And I also, I'm going to add in um, a lime. So lime works really, really well. What are we looking at here? I'm baking scones, I'm making my own jam. Oh my God, you're putting us to shame. Um, I love the sound of that. What kind of, I'm trying to die, again, nosy here. Scones, what kind of jam are you making? I must admit, I love a raisin scone. That's, that's my, that's my go-to comfort food. Jam and cream, a little bit of butter if I'm gonna treat myself as well. Um, so next up here into my mixer, I'm just going to be zesting my lime here. This is a handy little microplane, um, and I'm just going to add my lime into the buttercream and just give that a little bit of a mix, just so it's nice and soft. The one thing I would always say when you're gonna be decorating a cake 
is just to ensure that your buttercream is nice and soft because if your buttercream is anyways hard, it's just really hard to spread on the cake. And especially if your sponge is super fresh, you're gonna damage that by trying to spread hard buttercream over it as well. So um, again, just here now, I'm just gonna take my lime zest and I'm gonna add that into my mixer. I'm just gonna give that a little mix now for about maybe five seconds just to incorporate all of that lime zest and then I'm gonna start decorating the cake. Turn this on just for a second, bear with me. Raisin and cherry scones with raspberry jam, and I'm making my own salted bun. Look at this, sounds amazing. We're gonna to have to be looking for pictures for all of those delicious foods. Scones really is, in my opinion, the ultimate comfort food. Now, I have just mixed my buttercream here, so I'm just going to get my bowl. And again, in here, I have my butter, my icing sugar, I have added in um, my lime zest, and even the smell of that fresh lime is absolutely gorgeous. So if you can see, I might just come around and show you the consistency that we're looking for, for the buttercream. See how soft that is? Really easy to spread. If your buttercream or your butter is um, a little bit hard, don't be afraid to give it a little burst of maybe 10, 15 seconds in the microwave just to ensure that your butter is soft, not melted but just soft, It'll leave your life so much easier. And especially if you don't have a mixer, if you're using a hand mixer or even a spoon, um, it'll take you ages otherwise. So again, just a little tip there, don't be afraid to, to soften your butter um, before you use it. I'm gonna be popping on my buttercream here, a good layer in the middle, and I'm just going to be spreading that all over like so. So getting a lovely layer in the middle. Those little flecks of uh, lime zest is absolutely gorgeous as well. Any other little um, baking tips coming in? Anyone let me know what they're baking this weekend? We've got scones on the go. We've got apple crumble and rhubarb crumble on the go. Um, I could be doing a couple of house visits to visit you all. Now, taking my next sponge, and I'm just going to be popping that on top. And maybe you've noticed what I've done there. I like to turn my sponges over because the Bottom of your sponge is always flatter. Sometimes, depending if you overmix your sponge, you can get a little peak on top. And basically what you want to do is, when you're assembling it, is to either cut the peak off it, if you're not looking for that dome effect, if you want a nice flat cake. Um, otherwise, what I like to do is always just flip my sponge over, okay? And that way then you, you're ensured that you're getting a beautiful flat surface on top of your cake. And if you are gonna be decorating it with the buttercream or even just a little bit of icing or stuff on top, it's always so much nicer to work with um, a lovely um, flat surface on top here, okay? So now I'm just going to be adding in more buttercream on top. And this is a real treat, special occasion cake. And um, as I said earlier on to everybody, if you are just looking to make a single sponge, divide this recipe by two and then you can just make one sponge and decorate the top of that and it just works just as well. Um, and I'm just going to be turning this all over. How beautiful does this look already? I see, I see this is the best part of bake-alongs. I have this cake and I have one that has just gone into the oven. So I have to manage to either eat or give away two um, hummingbird cakes. I'll definitely, between licking the bowl and the spoon and having some of this later on, I have tons to keep me going for the weekend. Um, so I'm just gonna be getting a little bit more of my buttercream here. I'm just gonna be spreading that on the sides of the cake here, okay? And again, you don't need to be too fussy. I like a nice rustic buttercream finish. Just like so, spread that all around. Now what I would say to you is, you can buttercream your cake and pop it into the fridge the day before you're gonna be serving it, okay? But what I would say is, buttercream naturally is butter, so it's going to go rock hard in the fridge when uh, you put it in. So if you are serving it the following day, never really take a buttercream cake directly out of the fridge and serve it because two reasons, your buttercream is gonna be really, well, three reasons. The buttercream is gonna be really hard, the sponge is gonna be hard, um, and also you don't get the flavor, you don't get the, the same flavor payoff from something that's cold. When you let it come up to room temperature and the sponge and the buttercream becomes ambient, 
then you can taste all of those beautiful flavors that um, the mixed spice you put in there, the, the caramelly brown sugar notes, the, the pineapple, the pecans, you're gonna get all of those beautiful flavors um, when it comes to room temperature. So what I would say for a cake of this size, I would be taking this out a good hour before you plan on serving it, okay? So I'm just going to just give it one more little turn here, just to ensure we're getting all of this cake covered with that beautiful lime buttercream. People always ask me before, can you make buttercream with caster sugar or granulated sugar? And that I would say, if you're really, really, really stuck, I would say you can put it maybe the sugar into a fruit processor and give it a blitz, but you're better off using the icing sugar, which is the one here in the, the little blue bag, because you just get a really velvety, smooth um, buttercream finish on that as well. That's my mixer beeping. I'm just gonna turn that off and just gonna finish off a nice design here on top. I'm gonna move my bowl to one side. And now this is an added extra little touch as well. So I've um, dried out some pineapple slices. So this morning what I done was I just took a fresh pineapple. I would say no to tinned pineapples at this point because they're already pre-cut and they're way too thick. And then when you try to cut them thinner, they break and it's just a bit of a nightmare. So just pick up a um, fresh pineapple. So I just topped, tailed it, took off the outer peel and I sliced them as thin as I could. And I put those into an oven that was set at um, about 100 degrees, 110 Celsius, and they were in for about two hours. So about every 30 minutes, you're better off just turning them and then they naturally dry out. And then this is what you're left with. Come around just to show you. You're left with these absolutely beautiful dried pineapple crisps almost. Um, really nice. And they just add a gorgeous, I suppose, finish to the cake. Now again, you can make these the day before, Another little tip as well, if you want to make like pineapple flowers, what you can do is, is take your pineapple and cut them as thinly as you can. And then you can just pop those into like a cupcake tin um, and then dry them out in the oven that way. So when they dry and harden, they actually have a shape of a flower and they resemble a flower. And again, that's a really nice touch as well to add to the cake. So you can put that all over it. But these here, I'll just show you them here. They have just dried out lovely and thin now obviously the thicker you cut them the longer it's going to take it could take three hours it could take up to four hours perhaps in your oven so the secret is is just to get a, a good and carefully get a good serrated knife and um, try and carve them um, as thinly as possible that these took in around two and a half hours today but they've kept their um, shape beautiful sweet smell off them as well and now i'm just going to be decorating the top of the cake with this i'm going to be sticking them to the sides as well, all over. This is where you can get as creative as you want, like so. I can actually see better when I look at the camera here. Just gonna pop a few of these on the side, another little small one up here on top. And then we are going to be finishing this with a few crushed pecans. So I just kept the pecans here like so, and I'm just going to be crushing a few of those up just between my fingers and just sprinkling that on around the edges, not on the table, if you can help it. Um, sprinkle this on here, just a few around the top, just to add a little bit of texture, a little bit of color as well, like so. And I got a little one here gonna pop those at the front and then I actually do you know what I have in the fridge here which I almost forgot about some beautiful edible flowers these are McCormick's flowers they're based in County Mead really really nice Irish company as well um, and I have some beautiful um, flowers here just to add on top and as I said this is a real show-off cake and um, you don't need to um, be adding all these extra little flowers and stuff but if you are looking to impress or if you are looking just to show off just a little bit, um, it has been said once or twice about myself, but I do love edible flowers. They just finish everything off. Now, if this cake doesn't scream spring slash almost summer, I really don't know what does. Now, pop that on top like so. 
Okay, this is where I need to stop because it'll just be a flower cake if I don't stop soon. Just like so, pop this one here. A few of the little flowers here. Actually, I might see what I'm doing here. That's a little bit better. Work smarter, Shane, not harder. And um, a few of those on top. And this is just really visual, really pretty. Um, it's a gorgeous summer, spring summer cake. And that's it guys. That is my really simple and tasty um, hummingbird gatto. And that was all made using these gorgeous gem products. I used my gem self-raising flour, icing sugar, um, light soft brown sugar, baking powder. But again, gorgeous um, pineapple in there, pecans, and that's it. So I'm gonna bring it round just to show you. And that is our very simple, colorful, the little pineapple decided to fall on me there, pineapple slices on top then as well. As I said, it's a real, it looks delicious, that beautiful. Thank you so much guys for your comments. Um, as I said, yeah, it's a fun cake. So it's basically putting a twist on a banana bread, almost. You've got like the basic core ingredients of a banana bread, but you're adding in pecans and pineapple and all of those good things. Um, divine, thank you. Absolutely no problem at all. Um, if you are looking to recreate this recipe, it is over on the Gem Pack Food website. I'm pretty sure it'll be linked in the bio of the Instagram here. Um, I hope my boy. <laughs> Looks amazing, guys, lovely comments coming in, thank you so much. Um, but yeah, if you are looking to recreate this or you're looking for this recipe to try out this weekend or next weekend, it is over on the Gem Pack Food website. So that's gempackfood.ie. Um, my own Instagram is Chef Shane Smith. I'll be over there sharing some recipes too this weekend. So between Gem and myself, there's plenty of inspiration. Um, I'm looking forward to, um, so gorgeous, thank you, Aggie. Um, looking forward to seeing all of your recreations and if you do try this recipe out whether it's a single layer sponge a double layer sponge um, make sure and tag um, Gem Pack Foods on Instagram um, or if you're watching this over on Facebook that make sure and tag us as well because we want to see all of your recreations um, and again a little tip remember what I said if you are out looking for brown sugar I would recommend this one here the Gem Light Soft Brown Sugar really really good for baking especially in a cake like this it, it just as i said almost melts into the sponge as well so okay guys i think that's all the talking done for the evening and um, thank you so much for everyone who uh took time out of your evening to tune in um, and thank you for all of your um lovely baking um tell me what you're going to be baking this weekend and um i hope that you all have an amazing weekend happy friday i should have said that initially and um, i hope you all have a great weekend and we look forward to seeing all of your delicious gem recreations very soon. Cheers guys.